Hi, I'm Gagan. If you want to pass the certification exams like the CSSP and become an outstanding cybersecurity professional, you need to understand disaster recovery site strategies like hot, warm and cold sites, redundant setups, mobile recovery units and even cloud-based options. When disasters strike, whether natural, technical or human caused, organizations rely on these backup locations to keep running smoothly. A recovery site is an alternative location where an organization can temporarily relocate following a disaster or disruptive event that renders the primary site unusable. These disasters could include natural events like floods, fires or earthquakes, human-caused incidents such as cyber attacks, infrastructure failures like power outages or network interruptions. Recovery sites help organization maintain critical function until normal operations can resume at the primary location. These are key part of business continuity and disaster recovery planning and provide the physical infrastructure needed to execute your recovery strategies when primary facilities are compromised. Let's understand types of recovery sites, starting with hot sites. Hot sites are fully operational facilities with hardware, software, and network connectivity already in place. They maintain real-time data synchronization with the primary site. Hot sites provide near instant recovery times, typically under 15 minutes with modern solutions. They're essential for organizations like financial institutions and healthcare providers that simply cannot tolerate extended downtime. These sites come with the highest cost as they require complete duplication of infrastructure and continuous maintenance to remain ready at all times. Implementing a hot site demands robust data replication technologies, either synchronous for zero data loss or asynchronous for minimal loss with better performance. Many organizations maintain dedicated staff or rapid response teams to manage these sites. Automated failover mechanisms are often employed to minimize human intervention during a disaster. Rigorous and frequent testing is critical to ensure your recovery time objectives are consistently met. For maximum resilience, hot sites should be geographically separated from your primary location to protect against regional disasters. Warm sites contain necessary hardware and network infrastructure, but might not have all software configured or current data available. Warm sites offer moderate recovery times of hours to a day, typically less than 24 hours. They are ideal for organizations that can tolerate some downtime but need to be operational within a business day. These sites represent a middle ground in terms of cost, requiring some investment in redundant equipment, but not the full duplication of a hot site. To effectively implement a warm site, you will need a regular data backups and a periodic synchronization between sites. Your software installation and configuration plans must be thoroughly documented and tested. Staff training is critical. Your team must know the activation procedures to bring the site online during a disaster. Many organizations include contracts for rapid equipment delivery to complete the setup when needed. This approach effectively balances cost and recovery capability, making it suitable for many mid-sized organizations with moderate recovery time objectives. Cold sites provide only basic facilities, power, connectivity, climate control, a physical space with little or no pre-installed equipment. Cold sites have extended recovery times measured in days to weeks, depending on how quickly you can set up equipment and restore data. They are appropriate for organizations with less time-sensitive recovery needs or those working with limited disaster recovery budgets. While cold sites offer the lowest cost option, they require significant setup time when activated. This trade-off must be carefully weighed against your business requirements. To implement a cold site effectively, you will need contracts with vendors who can deliver equipment quickly in an emergency. Maintaining a comprehensive and current inventory of all required hardware and software is essential for a successful recovery. The process of restoring from backups adds considerable time to your recovery timeline. Many organizations use cold sites for non-critical business functions or as a secondary backup option alongside hot or warm sites for critical operations. This approach is most cost-effective when having assured recovery capability is more important than rapid recovery time.
Beyond these traditional models, today's technology offers additional recovery options that address modern business needs. Redundant sites represent the highest tier of recovery solution, providing near zero recovery times measured in seconds to minutes. These sites offer truly seamless failover during disasters. With active active configurations, both sites simultaneously process workloads, maximizing availability and eliminating downtime during transitions. This approach represents the most expensive option, but effectively eliminates business impact during disaster events. Many organizations implement load balancing across redundant sites, improving both performance during normal operations and resilience during disasters. However, this approach comes with significant challenges, including maintaining perfect synchronization between the sites and managing the complex failover processes. Mobile sites offer a unique approach to disaster recovery through portable data centers housed in towable trailers or shipping containers. These can be deployed to various locations as needed, complete with pre-configured equipment. This strategy is particularly valuable during regional disasters or when temporary operations are required in specific locations. Mobile sites provide the flexibility to establish operations near the affected area, which can be crucial for certain recovery scenarios. Organizations often use mobile sites in conjunction with other recovery strategies rather than as a standalone solutions. While offering flexibility, mobile sites typically have limitations, including reduced capacity compared to fixed facilities and the logistical challenges of deployment. Cloud-based recovery has completely changed how companies plan for disasters by using online servers and storage. Various deployment models exist, including disaster recovery as a service for fully managed solutions, infrastructure as a service for self-managed environments, and backup as a service for cloud-based backup and restoration. Recovery times in cloud environments are highly variable. Sub-minute RTOs are possible for critical workloads, while other systems may take longer depending on configuration. This flexibility allows organizations to prioritize their most important systems. The pay-as-you-go pricing model reduces capital expenditure compared to traditional recovery sites. Resources can be scaled precisely based on actual needs during recovery, optimizing cost. Cloud recovery eliminates facility management concerns but introduces new challenges, including data transfer speeds, potential egress cost when retrieving large volumes of data, and dependency on internet connectivity. This approach is particularly effective for organizations with distributed workforces that already leverage cloud technologies. Hybrid approaches combine on-premises and cloud-based recovery solutions to create comprehensive strategies tailored to specific organizational needs. This model allows for prioritization of workloads based on criticality and recovery requirements. Most organizations implementing hybrid recovery will place their mission-critical applications in traditional hot sites while leveraging warm sites or cloud platforms for less critical applications. This strategic allocation provides flexibility while optimizing overall disaster recovery costs. The hybrid model has become increasingly common as organizations manage environments that include both legacy systems and cloud native applications. This approach allows each system to be protected using the most appropriate and cost effective recovery method. This table shows the key trade offs for each recovery option. Hot sites recover fastest but cost the most, warm sites offer a middle ground. Cold sites are budget friendly but slow to recover. Redundant sites provide instant failover for critical systems. Cloud options give you flexible pay as you go pricing. Remember that your actual recovery times will vary based on your specific needs and investments. Regular testing is essential to make sure your recovery capabilities match your business requirements. This is crucial for both certification exams and real world implementation. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, provides valuable guidance on recovery site strategies as part of their cybersecurity framework. Key NIST recommendations are to document alternate site locations and infrastructure requirements, arrange for secure offline storage of critical data, 
include recovery details in broader contingency plans and define clear rules and responsibilities for recovery operations. NIST Special Publication 800-34 Contingency Planning Guide for Federal Information Systems provides comprehensive framework that organizations of all types, not just combat agencies, can leverage for effective recovery planning. NIST SP 800-184 Guide for Cybersecurity Event Recovery offers additional guidance specifically focused on recovering from cybersecurity incidents, which has become increasingly relevant with the rise of ransomware and other targeted attacks. NIST emphasizes off-site storage as critical protection against ransomware and other attacks that could compromise primary data. The key recommendation here is maintaining the three to one backup strategy. At least three copies of data stored on two different media types with one copy stored off-site and offline. This approach ensures that even if primary systems and nearby backups are compromised, organizations maintain access to critical data for recovery operations. NIST advises regularly updating recovery plans based on lessons learned from incidents in test, changes in business requirements, emerging technologies, and validation against recovery time objectives. According to NIST, the recovery planning is not a one-time activity, but rather a continuous cycle of assessment implementation, testing, and improvement. The key to choosing the right recovery site is conducting a business impact analysis or BIA. This systematic process helps you understand exactly what your business needs to cover, how quickly and at what cost. A comprehensive BIA identifies critical business functions and their dependencies, maximum tolerable downtime, recovery time objectives, recovery point objectives, and work recovery time. For a deeper dive into these critical metrics and how to calculate them, please watch a dedicated video on disaster recovery metrics that I've created. I break down each of these concepts in detail. These metrics form the foundation of your entire recovery strategy. So understanding them thoroughly is essential. When planning your recovery strategy, always balance cost against speed. While faster recovery costs more, you can justify this investment by calculating what downtime actually costs your business. Remember that real-world recovery times rarely match perfect test conditions. For data protection, match your backup strategy to your recovery needs. Mission-critical systems may require real-time replication, while weekly backups might work for less critical data. Whatever approach you choose, validate your backups regularly. An untested backup isn't a backup at all. Finally, never skip testing. Your recovery plan is only as good as your last successful test. Test after every infrastructure change, document your results, and address any gaps you find. Use different testing methods, from simple tabletop exercises to full-scale simulations to ensure comprehensive readiness. For certification exams and real-world implementation, Remember that your recovery time capabilities must align with your business requirements and only rigorous testing can confirm this alignment. Recovery site strategies are crucial for business continuity. So choose the option hot, warm, cold, mobile or cloud that best fits your organizational need, budget and recovery goals. As a cybersecurity professional, your role includes conducting thorough business impact analysis, recommending appropriate recovery solutions, ensuring data protection and system redundancy, supporting regular testing and plan updates, and advocating for necessary resources. Remember that disaster recovery site strategies don't exist in isolation. They must integrate with your overall security architecture, data governance policies, incident response procedures, regulatory compliance requirements, and business strategic objectives. For certification exam candidates, you will need to understand not only the technical aspects of recovery sites, but also how they support the organization's broader business continuity and disaster recovery goals. I hope this overview helps you better understand disaster recovery site options. I'll see you in the next cybersecurity video. Thanks.